In my previous video tutorial, I looked at a plate with a hole under uniform stress. Um, and we got some solutions for that. Let's open that file first. So it was a plane stress model. And we looked at the distribution of the von Mises stress. And that looked quite uh, discontinuous and not even symmetric. So that mesh actually needs refinement. We can plot the stresses in Y and that doesn't look uh, good either. The maximum value looks reasonable, um, but we'll need to refine the mesh and rerun this. So we can do this by, let's go back to the simulate model, analysis and studies, and we can edit the analysis and we can change to say from single pass to multi-pass adaptive we can increase the polynomial orders and we can also increase the percentage convergence so one percent so let's try to run this with the, these settings and see if, it, if that improves um, run this yes yes to so interactive diagnostics So it actually increases the runtime, maybe a few seconds. And we can see if this has improved the results. So if you looked at the von Mises stress again, um, the maximum value didn't change that much, 321 megapascals. And the stresses still look quite discontinuous. So if you wanted to have a nice smooth stress field, um, you'll need to improve the mesh density. So let's try that option now. We can close the results view. And we can close the analysis and studies. And we'll need to go and refine the model. So we can do this refinement by mesh controls. So we can do that, say, by maximum element size. We can select the surface and say, make the elements maximum 10 millimeters in element size. So that will be my first auto jam control. And you can see that that's listed under the auto jam control on the left. I can add another control, another element size, but this time focus on the um, edges of the hole. So I can select edge or curves, select these two edges of the hole and then say well make the elements maximum two millimeter edge size on this um, boundary so let's say okay to that so if we look at the mesh density we can look at auto jam and create the mesh to look at what's the, what is it like and you can see that it's a very much finer mesh so let's close that and close we can save the mesh if you want and then we can rerun our analysis so we can go back to home analysis and studies and rerun this yes to interactive diagnostics it'll probably take a few more seconds to run which isn't too bad, uh, in 2D, and we can run uh, the results, and that looks a uh, much nicer, smoother distribution of the stresses. And the maximum stress there it hasn't changed much at all. Again, it's about 318 megapascals. So these are the results of a plain stress model. So this is, in fact, just a, a thin representation, a plain representation of a, a solid a structure and we can see that that's maximum is about 318 megapascals and we applied 100 megapascals at the at the boundary at the top edge and fixed the bottom edge so we can say the stress concentration compared to the stress applied at the top is about 3.18 this is a typical study of a 
stress concentration factor. And these type of studies are done uh, for a range of geometries, looking at various hole to width ratios, uh, plate sizes, etc. And um, I can show you an example of um, a stress concentration study that's based at the uh, fracturemechanics.org um, and in this case you can see that stress concentrations are studied since um, the end of the 19th century really. So there are analytical solutions to represent the stresses and these analytical solutions for an infinite plate uh, typically tell us that the stress concentration is three times the stress at the far um, side of the plate. So in this case the hoop stress is three times the sigma infinity. So sigma infinity is at the far boundary and the maximum stress appears at this corner at this point and that's about three times the um, far boundary. What happens is that uh, that stress concentration is highest at that point and reduces as uh, the point moves into the uh, plate. And this is for an infinite plate. And there are studies that look at what happens if it's a finite plate. For example, uh, finite width effects are studied in this case as well. And in this case, again, the plate width is W, the diameter of the hole is D, and it's possible to calculate a, a nominal stress at the cross section where the hole is, and also a far field stress, and that's sigma infinity. So the stress concentration factor can be calculated based on either the nominal stress or the far field stress. So KT in this case is calculated as uh, the maximum stress at the edge of the hole to the nominal stress and that's an empirical um, representation and that shows that if it is done for various diameter to width ratios that stress concentration factor appears to go down but remember that this is done against a nominal stress for the uh, cross section that has the hole. If we do the stress concentration ratio with respect to the far field uh, stress, that means we can find that this is represented by the, the red line in this graph. So sigma max over sigma infinity is going to increase indefinitely as the diameter to uh, plate width is increased. And these type of stress concentration studies are done for um, a large number of different geometries. You can find, for example, the ASDU data sheets. An example is 09014, elastic stress concentration factors. And that looks at geometric discontinues in flat bars or strips of isotropic materials. So these are listed in terms of various uh, geometrical um, parameters. Uh, one of the research papers that I have studied was uh, what happens to the elastic stress concentration at radial cross holes in pressurized tech cylinders. And what we found was that it can be quite complex when you consider uh, a 3D stress state. So what we can see in the um, plain stress representation is a simplification of a complex 3D uh, geometry. And in the next video we'll look at what happens if it's a full 3D structure and what happens if we represent uh, the 3D structure as a plain strain model rather than plain stress.